Where am I? I'm down here. Down here. In the ruins. I'm down here. Hey folks, I'm in the garage dungeon tonight for the After Dark live stream. We have got some loud rain happening, uh, but we've got some ruins to paint. And uh, I think we've got DMK in the chat. Thanks buddy, good to have you here. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got some ruins I want to paint. I'm getting these ready for some uh, some of the to fit in with the uh, stage top type stuff. We've got Ole Ole as well. Uh, welcome. And <laughs> I'm just gonna stand up because this is freaking awkward the band bad, but it's, it's super super atmospheric down here in the ruins. Oh, wow! <laughs> hey folks, it has been uh, an East. I hope everyone's had a good Easter weekend. I'm, uh, I'm literally just like relaxing in here after a, a lot of chocolate eggs uh, and stuff and kid craziness that's kind of happened all weekend. So it's been good to kind of get back in here, touch some models and that kind of thing. I'm gonna turn off <laughs> all the smoke that's coming through here. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, ooh, there we go. Yeah, so we got these, uh, the, if you're unfamiliar with these tiles that I'm gonna be looking at today, these ones are from Terrainify. Uh, so they are uh, some STL 3D printable type stuff and the, mostly the reason I've kind of gone with these ones is they're a perfect eight inch uh, size tile which works very well with the, uh, the uh, <laughs> I'm getting tangled up here in with the um, stage top system here uh, which is also these eight inch size tiles. So I'm Kind of making these to kind of fit in with that kind of ecosystem. Apologize, uh, apologies for the rain if it's coming in through super loud. I'm going to try my best, um, but yeah, you know, honestly, like if you're like me, I, I, I love to work in the rain just to be in here in the garage in the dungeon. And uh, uh, yeah, it, it is. It, it actually, <laughs> the, it we did have a little bit of a flood earlier up here. You can see I had a whole bunch of uh, models up here which are now not here because uh, we had a bit of a leak happening in the ceiling. This isn't much uh, of what was going on up there, but it was all my 3D printers and stuff down here had a nice little waterfall going on down there. So you can see they are mostly absent from there now. So it's all, uh, it's all all right now. We managed to kind of get it out under control. Uh, but um, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna get some paint on these. I've got already been doing a little bit of testing uh, on with like some of the, um, the, the brown stuff. So I'm gonna build it up with the airbrush. I've been kind of going back and forth if I'm gonna use the airbrush or some brushes. It's just because it's 3D printed. I, I tend to kind of go towards an airbrush just to kind of, it kind of works a bit better with some of the layer lines and stuff. Um, but yeah, th th thanks everyone for kind of stopping by in the chat. Let's see, we've got Jasper, Tan, Tan, Nick. Welcome all. And we're gonna just <laughs> relax it here. I was gonna, I was gonna sip some whiskey and stuff. And I am fresh out. I, uh, I, I love to have a little bit of a cup of something whilst I'm doing something. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, look, I'm, if anyone's got any whiskey, whiskey recommendations in the chat, I'm a little, little cash light at the moment because I spent all my money on, on Lego. Uh, <laughs> recently with that new D&D Lego set that came out. Um, but yeah, if there's any like whiskey recommendations, let me know, let me know in the chat. I'm, I'm super keen to, to, to get a taste of uh, something in here. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm dry, fresh, fresh out. Anyway, so, but it's, it is, it is interesting, like looking at these ruins now, like, um, because I think back in the day, like before we did all like the 3D printing and stuff, I definitely probably would have crafted a lot of this stuff. And I think I, I, as I was kind of like printing this stuff and putting this all together, I kind of put that question in my head of like, could I have crafted this? You know, would I have crafted this back in the day? This kind of, this kind of stuff? Sure, definitely. I, I think it's come with the territory of like, having not a lot of like bonus time to kind of like work on this kind of stuff. Whereas the 3D printing has become a bit of an augmentation. I see we've got Laprague. I'm gonna have to like take notes, <laughs> take notes. La Laprague, La Lafro, Lafrog, Lafrog, I'm probably saying that very wrong. We've got John A. Johnson in the chat. Welcome to have you here, buddy. 
Uh, we've got a lot of noise in here, so apologies if it comes through. We've got rain, we're gonna have airbrush compressors, we're gonna have fans from this. I'm probably gonna have to put it on a respirator at some point, but um, yeah, we're, we're trying to get some of these, these ruins painted. Uh, let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna switch to this remote one here. Uh, you have the Terrainify wall ruins and they're awesome. Yeah, I, I just realized that they've got a whole bunch of extra kind of like ruin set. Lafroy, Lafroy. I, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to take note of that one. Um, yeah, I, I realized they've got a lot of like ruin sets from, to choose from. Like even with like the nice like cathedral kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, I might print a few more of these. But I've gone with like the basic, they're, they're a little pricey, so I only got like the, the basic set to begin with. But, um, you yeah, know, other than that, it's been very nice. You in the shed with the rain reminds me of being out in my dad's shed 30 years ago as a teenager, painting my fresh box of old Warhammer and lizard men. Man, yeah, this is, this is, this is, it, this is it, right? This is the start of Atmoseeker. Just, um, I'm in, I'm in my, my garage with tin roof sheds, no soundproofing. So, so if the, if the neighbors are lawn mowing or something, it's, uh, it's very good for filming. Basically I have to stop. <laughs> but, um, oh, very oh, high on the peat. I don't mind a bit of a peat. I like to shake it up a bit. Bit of a, bit of this and that. Uh, current preferred whiskey camper van cookout, welcome. Uh, Talisker, Talisker is a nice one. I've had Talisker before, that's very good. Uh, oh, dude, man, these, are, these, <laughs> these names are getting super exotic. Auchentosan, Auchentoshan, a nice, uh, and a nice Highland Park. I like the Highland Park because it's easy to pronounce. I'm gonna have to go back on like the uh, the chat log here and just like make note of all these whiskeys. But I'm gonna start off with uh, just a this is like a medium brown at the moment. So I'm building. I, I usually prime my stuff like gray and then build it up. But I thought it would help with like the shading and because these ruins are probably going to be a bit darker. So I thought it'd be good to start from a black black prime. But it's pretty, it gets pretty quick with the airbrush to get something on there. I actually think I've made too much up of this brown, but we'll see. Highland Park is good. Bana, <laughs> Bana, um, man, this, this, this stream is just gonna be me just butchering these names. Bana Harwin. I want to say semi-affordable too, guys. This can't be like a $200 bottle of whiskey. Uh, Highland Park is good if you want smooth. I like a bit of variety, like a little bit of peat, a little bit of smooth. Uh, sometimes I like to have it neat, sometimes on the rocks. I, I recently got given some of those whiskey stones because, you know, I'm, I'm a whiskey drinker, but I don't know, I'm, I, I don't love it. I don't, if, I, if I'm gonna have, if I'm gonna have ice in there, I feel like, like if I'm gonna have something cold in there, it feels weird having the stones in there. Bonus action hero RPGs, welcome. You're saying, uh, Oichen, <laughs> Oichen Toshan. Is that Japanese? Am I, am I, because it, it looks German, but it's, it's, when I pronounce it, it sounds Japanese. Right, we've got, we're already two tiles down here, because I have to fit inside. Now, if, if you are planning on printing some of these tiles yourself, I have noticed to kind of fit them in with the uh, stage top system, you've got to scale them down just slightly because they were just a little bit big to kind of fit in there. Only slightly, like 
it, 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 was a, it was just a little bit tight. There we go. This, this is actually already looking pretty good. Wow, rain is really coming down now. Not the ideal weather for live streaming, but if you're like me, you like the sound of the rain. I, this is actually probably pretty good because I can keep an eye on that leak. Yeah, it's leaking. You, we, anyone want to have a, a little gander of what's going on with that leak cam? Cool as us. We just locked, we lost the leak cam. Oh, gonna have to see if I can try and fix that one. All right. Uh, cool as ice. I like a little bit of water, to be honest. I didn't find the stones worked as well. Yeah, I, I found that too. Just the stones are very, they're in there. They added a bit of nice weight, but I didn't feel like they cooled it as much. And you're definitely on point with just a little bit of water in there. It helps bring out the flavor I found. Uh, <laughs> looking at the rain radar, it's set in for a few hours yet. Oh my God. And I have to, hopefully, let me, let me see if I can reboot this camera real quick. We're keeping this ship going. Oh God. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, it is. Yo, know, actually, I want to have a look at the radar too. Let's, let's have a look. Because I know some folks already uh, without power. Uh, let's see. Radar, weather. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I see some thunderstorm. Let's have a look at the map. Nothing. I, I see nothing. It's all oh, sh- <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there it is. There's a lot of rain. A lot of rain happening over here. Uh, it's been like that here. Well, it just started. We, we had like a good stream of like um, hot weather. Uh, and now it was, I think it just started this afternoon, raining a bit. Uh, and I, I always get a little bit nervous when using like the um, audio filters and stuff for like rain. Like there probably is some like good stuff, but I don't, my laptop doesn't have like an RTX card or something, so I can't use the good stuff. If it does bother people, I can try to look at getting some uh, some noise filtering. Werribee still has no... Where, where are you at, Tan? You sound like you're local. All these names, these local, you know, like local Melbourne names. All right, man, this is actually going super fast with the air. Like I was like, oh, do I use, do I use a brush and just kind of like over, overlay it and stuff. But no, man, it's actually been pretty good. Just dumping with the airbrush. Like I'm probably gonna have to like dry brush a little bit with like the gray or something. This is looking pretty good. And it's kind of almost like creating like a zenithal kind of thing, but with like the brown. Yeah. So it sounds like some people are without power. I, I think my mum had her power go out. Put another one down. These are, these are looking good so far. Let's have a look remote wise. Yeah, so we, even, even that so far, not too bad. I'm probably gonna like start mixing in some like green 
and greys and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I just, I just, I just checked out that radar. It is insane. Uh, hopefully, yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's have a look at the floods that is happening up here. It's it's, it's starting to it's starting to drip. Okay. It's it's under control. I think it's just this one one, one spot happening. I was going to 3D print some stuff tonight, but I might hold off. I don't want my printers getting electrocuted. Um, did I build it or 3D print it? Uh, no, 3D print it. It's the um, Terrainify uh, ruins. And I, I was just thinking about it like earlier, like probably back in the day, I probably would have made a lot of this stuff. I think just like the nature of you know, trying to juggle quite a few things and how 3D printing has gotten quite a, a lot easier. You know, it's you kind of lean a little bit more into this stuff. And I noticed that's kind of been more what's been kind of happening on the channel. Like a lot of my stuff has been more 3D printed. And I think if I had more of the time to kind of work on this stuff, I probably would get a bit more crafting. Bit more crafting in it. I've got ideas that are kind of more towards crafting. I like that. I, I like getting into it, and there is like a different kind of feel aesthetic with the crafted stuff. But I think a lot of my videos and content is a lot about these kind of sets and stuff. And this is the fastest way for me to kind of get this stuff together. And also kind of like that if I do design my own thing, whatever kind of uh, models, folks can identically recreate it at home with their own printers. I don't know, I'm a fan of both. I, I like both, but the, the printing has definitely helped uh, get ahead of some of this stuff. Um, bonus action heroes, I'm starting on planning a uh, game finale a uh, few years with time. Your channel is a great inspiration, thank you very much. Uh, need an epic landscape for a multiple demon lords battle. Oh man. I, I think, especially with stuff like that, like rock formations uh, are going to be great. You know, all kinds of different rock formations, because you can set those, set dress those up either any way, especially by like lighting, you, especially if it's like a dark kind of volcanic kind of like paint job on it. You can get, you can get pretty, pretty versatile. I was actually looking at a set from, uh, it was recommended in the Discord. What was it called? Stone Trove or something? And they have like a huge variety of 3D printable rocks. That was actually kind of what I was going to start printing tonight. But uh, I'm a little nervous with all the rain. But yeah, they've they've got some cool like structures and stuff. I think like just having all those kind of like modular pieces of rock helps get you like really cool like elevation, especially if you have extra stuff like lighting and fog and stuff. It kind of gives that texture for things to kind of like move around a bit. Um, but big stuff, uh, so small stuff I do with resin, but the big stuff, what do you do, you use, I like, I'm over there, drying, <laughs> we've got, we've got a, uh, over there, well, you can't even see in the shadows, I, but it was down there, but now, now it's over there, it is, uh, an Anycubic Viper, that's what I've been using, that was what, what, the one of the first ones I've used on the channel, but then the kind of prototype and print things a lot faster. I've been using the Bamboo Labs P1P, and that one's been phenomenal. It's been like a pretty, pretty great workhorse. I've been able to kind of print quite a bit with that. Like I think to print this whole set, 
uh, of how many tiles have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, <laughs> eleven, I think twelve. I've got twelve tiles here. I think it took me under a week to, I think it was about ten hours ish per tile because it's quite noisy. The head has to move around quite a bit. But um, yeah, I think it's been pretty good to kind of get things done a lot faster. Uh, yeah, so I, the Bamboo Labs ones, they're pricey, but if I'd known from the start, like I had, I think I had a Viper, uh, Anacubic Viper, I had a, uh, what's the, an Ender 3 and stuff. And like the amount of, especially with the Ender 3, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> with the Ender 3, the amount of like misery I had um, with trying to get things printing. Like coming to like the Bamboo Labs one, I was like, I wish I had just gotten the Bamboo Labs one from the start. Just because of the amount of out output I've been able to print with that and just the flawless, just like lev auto leveling. Just, just, the, just the fact that when it like draw, it has the Bowen's head inside the extruder. So you use all the filament, it goes all the way through like it's got all the, like the, the bells and whistles and stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool. Like how it cleans the, cleans the, the just all the little nick, little niggling kind of things that you normally get with like 3D printing um, has kind of been great. Now, I haven't got an AMS for it, but I have been kind of tempted because um, I want to mass produce some stuff. But yeah, I, I kind of, that's been my favorite so far. Uh, Jonathan, Oh, Bargo, good to have you here. I've been thinking uh, with set inspiration as your primary content when you run out of space. That's, a, that's an excellent point. A <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I try, like, honestly, whenever I design stuff, I like to have stuff like modular or be able to kind of like fold away or get the most out of those kind of like, like already with like these ruins, like they might, have a particular kind of like paint job to them but with the right kind of lighting different types of light like we said to like this kind of lighting or something you can get a good variety of different kind of scapes like a uh, frosty looking especially with um, different types of scatter you can get a lot of versatility with different types so I try to kind of pick and choose what are the types of stuff I print Big rocks and stuff for rock formation stuff is definitely a lot more bulky to kind of uh, store, but you'd get a lot of versatility out of it. Especially if you have some like good scatter to kind of put around, it's pretty good. Um, but yes, I am running out of space, but I think I, I definitely try to pick and choose what I print of the big stuff. And I like to have stuff that kind of is more modular and can pack way a lot easier, I think. Uh, Jonathan Barger says, I, I know a guy who was a diehard Prusa fanboy. He swapped out all his MK4s for MK3s, but Bamboo Lab is so much easier. Hmm. Um, haven't, I think also saying that you haven't, uh, I haven't used it other than never having to swap filament. That is handy, because I've definitely come into the morning that, to find it like, oh, we, we stopped printing because it ran out of filament. Like, oh, man, that was like seven hours ago. Yeah, so I definitely like that. I definitely want to do stuff like the dungeon torches that I have on the channel. I want to break those up into the different colors. Um, so you could just rinse off a whole bunch of them, even if it was just like brown, gray, black, and you could print up a whole bunch of props that way. Uh, yeah, I think there's some like terrain uh, suppliers now that are doing like multiple different color stuff for their, um, their terrain, 3D printables type stuff, which is cool because mostly like even Man, I was painting some 
dungeon torches the other day, I didn't even rattle, prime them or anything. I just painted straight onto it. I know, Ugh, faux pas, but it yeah, looks fine. Like it, it, especially if you've got like the base colors and stuff, varnish that stuff, Work, works. Because I need to just get stuff done fast. Yeah, it's been pretty handy. Uh, Uraziel, uh, let me know if I <laughs> butchered that. Love your content, man. Been watching over a long time. Welcome, thank you very much. Uh, you really inspired my DD setting a whole bunch. You changed the game at my table. Thanks a lot. Oh, that's awesome. I like, I think with a lot of the content I try to do on here, I hope it turns DD into this like fun event for folks. Like, even if you don't do a lot of this stuff all the time. If it's like, oh, we've got this final battle, we've got, we're fighting Strahd at the end of this, I want to add a little bit of extra something to this. I think it does kind of make those like special events for D&D quite memorable. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, thank you so much. That's great. Uh, how the Lego, <laughs> how the Lego flame torch turn out? Now, uh, I did, it, it did kind of, I did kind of leave it at the end of that stream just because I have to kind of, uh, I've been jumping on to the caves video recently. Um, so I'm still filming that. So I had to put that aside for a little bit, but it, I did work out why it wasn't sliced, slicing properly. It needs a little bit of mesh cleanup, but hopefully once the cave videos is done, I'll be able to clean that up and get a prototype printed. Uh, cause I want to have those done. Especially because that new Dungeons and Dragons Lego set is on the way. Yeah, I need definitely need to get get going on that. We got the skull. I'm gonna have some torches. I'm trying to think of something else. If we need anything else, that might be enough. That might, that might be enough to kind of get what we need for that that video. I was thinking of printing little Lego hands, <laughs> little Lego hands for a bit in the video, where I can kind of wave like that. I do work as uh, an animator as well. So I was thinking of animating a little bit of a Lego intro to the video. But I don't know, that might be time intensive. We'll see, maybe I can find a 3D rig somewhere. Um, uh, bonus action hero says, uh, I've been using switched button battery holders to hold mini bases and flip the torches, but if a cotton thread Cover the wires and a flickering LED slot under your minis. Ah, oh, that's cool. Button battery holders to into mini bases. Yeah, I, I, I love that idea and I, I'd love to do it more. I think maybe like the button batteries that I have are too big or something because it looks, it gets quite bulky um, to me. So I don't know if I've, I'm just using the wrong size batteries or something, but I'd love to get that, that, that kind of like footprint down. Something I'd love to do is if if I had like a game table uh, that I was designing myself, you know like those, um, what do you call it? It's like those like power rings for like wireless charging and stuff and you get those like little LEDs that light up when they're in proximity. I would just like do the whole table surface like that. So then when you put minis on it, those LEDs just like light up. I think that could be kind of cool. I mean, if you if you make game tables, do that, do that for your your next one. And that's that sounds like a great idea. Maybe even I could do like probably like tiles like this for the stage top that had that built in. That would be pretty rad, actually, because then you could have localized little power kind of like zones for these like little LEDs. Um, yes, the D&D set was last night, definitely been, I think got that eventually. Uh, <laughs> man, that is a pricey set. I, I wish, I wish they had broken it up a bit more. Because I would have loved it to be more affordable. <laughs> more affordable. It's, um, so now, yeah, now, now Seb can't buy whiskey. For a little bit but i am taking your recommendations when that opens up a bit 
but yeah, I wish they'd broken it up into like little miniature sets of like the tavern and the, the kind of like forest crossing kind of thing. I think that would have made it, I don't know. I feel like that would have made it a bit more accessible. All right, yeah, how, we, how we go with all of this? I think we're going pretty well. We're, getting, we're getting, making some good time here. We've got most of these, the first pass of it. I might have to slip on it. I might have to slip on a respirator in a minute, but it's been fun chatting so far. Uh, am I late to the party? Thank you though. Welcome to have you here. What am I working on? I am working on some tiles for uh, the stage top system which uh, these ones are by uh, Terrainify. So they are perfectly sized for the stage top system by Gutshot Games. So they're 3D printable, but um, it's been great to have something that fits, slots nicely into that system there. So let's see if we, we grab one of these here. Let's see, it slots in there. So basically, I have I have one of these set up around the corner in my um, D and D setup. I like them because they got all these holes and stuff uh, for fog machines and everything. Uh, so, but apparently, there's all, all different types of like ruins and stuff I'm I'm unaware of. So I'll have to check out more of their library. I put a link in the description to the one I'm using at the moment. But um, yeah, it's been fun, fun to start painting these. Uh, and the tile you're looking at at the moment is actually a little bit of a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, well, I've done a little bit of a modification to this one because a lot of the tiles that he has for this ruin set, like if I can find one of these ones, all right, we'll put them side by side. But you can see they're not perfectly flat. And I love the like the texture and variation. And honestly, for like a lot of photography type stuff, it'll be great to kind of have that variation. But sometimes you just want something super flat so you can just place something on there. Uh, so I, I kind of modified one of the tiles just to be flat on top. So that's made it a lot handier if you want to kind of put like portals on it or other kind of rock formations and stuff. Uh, so they're just, yeah, it's been a little bit of a work in progress. Yeah, they're, they're, they've got some good stuff on that terrain of fire. I think it's just on like my mini factory. Ooh, we are out of brown there. Cool. Um, it's in, was considering Integrating the Adafruit inductive large coils into stage top would have wireless LEDs. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. We're on the same page. Yeah, I, I wonder if, some, like, honestly, usually whenever I think of that kind of stuff or someone think, like, it's, it's probably been done before, right? Which I hope it has. I hope that's the case because it'd be great to just find those, put it in. Those coils are cheap. So um, I guess you have to have a little bit of thought in the terms of like how like because you want to have it not too much resistance on the top or you know like too thick for that power signal to get through but that could be great that could be really good i really love that idea Those paint super quick. Oh, I'm just gonna bring that stack over here. Still raining. Still raining. <laughs> Man.
Burratrol. Welcome, buddy. We are just painting some of these terrainifier tiles. Now, if you do end up like doing the same combo as I do uh, with we see these um, terrainifier tiles and uh, using them with the stage top got from Gutship Games, the uh, stage top system. I did find that I had to scale down the tiles just slightly because as was, it was a little bit too perfect uh, of, a scale, of a size on these tiles. So, uh, which made them too snug to kind of fit in there, especially with like the side rails and that kind of thing. So uh, I scaled it down to like 99.5 instead of 100%. And that worked out pretty well. All right, there we go. Another one done. Man, the airbrush sure makes things speedy. Man, it's fast. Uh, gave up on when math came in. <laughs> yeah, honestly, just make it a little smaller and it worked. Uh, this is an FDM print. That is correct. That's correct, sir. How are we doing for time here? 11. I was hoping to get these all painted up. I want to get a little bit more than base coated on these. Instead of just a whole bunch of chocolate tiles here at <laughs> the moment. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the quality does look great. So yeah, these are all printed on the Bamboo Labs P1P. Uh, probably these flat tiles you're looking at was about a nine, nine hour print. But, um, I'm quite excited about like the, the cobblestone because I think that could be quite useful. Even just these like super flat ones for like town encounters, that kind of thing so I could put like a village type stuff around. Yeah, so we've got a whole bunch of these now. Base, base I guess semi base so they were primed black. This, this camera just keeps changing on me. Hang on there. Here we go, sorry. <laughs> oh no, I've lost the, the camera control, but yeah, so they were all primed black, and now I've started uh, just kind of, kind of almost like overspraying a little bit, not kind of going full coat with the brown. I think what I'm gonna do is, ugh, I can bring in some gray, I think. Maybe just kind of hit the high tops of things. That's what I'm thinking. Because my, my camera control is not working 100%. I feel like it's gotten out of sync with the stream deck here. Let me see if I can bring it back here. It's fine. It's come, what is, but just my button's not working? My button's not working. I don't know. All right. Now I'm going to switch this out to a gray. I think. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get one of these ruin sets in here. Okay. All right. Oh, it's still, still raining. <laughs> Man, this weather, this weather is insane. 
And let, let's do a little, let's do a little check in on the flood in here. Every time I do that, I pull out the cable. You son of a bitch! Ah, oh, you bastard. All right, I'll have to plug that back in. But it is filling up. I can see the, the water jiggling. Um, Barishol saying, I need to calibrate my Anacubic Cobra. Uh, one day and start printing again. I found a tech to get amazing results and FDM prints called fuzzing skin. I did see something like that too. Can't wait to test it on some structures. Yeah, I, I've been wondering about the fuzzy skin because it was on the bamboo slicer as well. And I'm wondering, is it something that could happen and then you can sand it back a bit? Honestly, yeah. I think it does add to the print time a bit, but it'd be interesting, especially for like, smoother kind of structures and stuff like um yeah like i printed this like lego skull guy and it's pretty good but you can definitely see like the lines there and i'm wondering if the fuzzy skin would have helped so you could sand it and stuff i do like it being smooth but yeah i don't know but yeah that's something worth checking out Uh, what have we got? I was going to try and fix that camera. Okay, I gotta stop yanking it out. Alright, one second. Hopefully, hopefully that fixes it. <laughs> go here. Yeah! There we go. Got it back. Lovely. The, 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 the buttons still don't work for adjusting it. Uh, I'm gonna order my Prusa MK4 next week. So I can finally start printing my stage top. <gasps> Exciting. Honestly, like, mate, I've been super enjoying the stage top just because it kind of gives you all those holes, all those holes to work with. All the <laughs> holes. That's the thing I'm excited about, the holes. Um, not the, you know, Although, yeah, you can get some cool, like, rails and stuff. Uh, I've been showing quite a bit of the setup I've been using on the um, Atmosica Discord as well. Uh, if you're new to the channel and want to see some more, like, behind the scenes and that kind of thing, there, there is a Patreon uh, with a lot of fine folk in it. And I should show a lot of behind the scenes of what I'm working on, usually in the Discord. I should, I, I should post more in the Patreon posts as well. But um, yeah, usually, usually I'll just post what I'm working on at the moment. At the moment, it's this stuff. It's I I am notorious for just starting lots of projects. <laughs> uh, but you know, I I always want to kind of keep the printer churning stuff out. Uh, so on the cards, if you were kind of like, what's what Seb got in the pipeline? Atmosphere wise, we've got the caves video for Archon Studios. That's something I'm filming at the moment. So hopefully we'll have that all filmed this week. And then, yeah, filmed and edited, fingers crossed. And I'm also working on the Lego video, which will be all about using Lego for Dungeons and Dragons and uh, you know, how to kind of have some like tabletop setups with that, like room size props and stuff. And what else am I working on? There's this stuff, but I don't know what this is for. <laughs> I just have I just have ruins now. I figure you, you can always use ruins. Uh, it's oh, the fog box is too tall. Oh, if you don't know, the fog box is my 3D printable uh, fog box solution so it's for mixing and chilling fogs um let john let me know how far off we are from fitting it on there and i will make a modified model of the fog box so it sits sits within range for you is the is the width and depth all right it's just the height but yeah you'll let let me know and i'll make i'll make adjustments because i i think 
I try to get as much height on it as possible to kind of um, give it some of that, more of that deceleration time. But that's, I think, I can't remember if there was a specific reason for the height I went for, if I just went for as much space as I possibly could print. Or, if it had same specific reason. I think, I think I could make an adjusted version for you. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, let me know the height in the Discord. And um, yeah, I'll make an adjusted version for you. Okay, I think we're ready to go. We're ready to go gray town. Hmm. <laughs> Yes, yes. But I'm, I'm, I'm always all ears for like feedback and uh, ideas on that kind of stuff. Stuff like, Zeb, it's too tall. I can't print this shit. Make it smaller. I could do this for you. All right, we've got... These are looking great. Let me actually just turn that off for a second. Oh. Right, we want to get a little bit of gray happening on the top of these guys. So I'm going to need a gray paint, which would be somewhere. Ah, I can just use what I'm going to use. So I'm gonna get my, uh, what is this? Procryl primer. Uh, and I'm going to just put a little bit of black in there. I think black, black ink. Yeah, that's black. Black, black. Uh, I need a mixing thing. Some kind of cup. There's some kind of cup here. Have we got something to mix it in, Sam? No, like, I'll mix it in my mouth. That's what I'll do. Ah! Here we go. I think I've got some old cups I could empty out. Here we go here. Oh, what is that? I don't know what color it is. I've got blue. I don't need blue. I'm going to get rid of this blue. mix. I am running super low on thinner. Uh, I did order more like a week ago. It still hasn't arrived. I have to maybe use some, just use some water I guess. Maybe the, maybe the ink will be enough too. No, that's it. That's it for the thinner. Oh, who is the miniature with the axe? How do you spy that? How do you see that? I don't even know how you... Oh, from the overhead. This guy? This lad up here? This is my... This is my... This is from Hero Quest. Yeah, we painted him uh, a, few, a few weeks ago on um, After Dark special. He's looking all right. I still have to do some like touches and stuff. Like he had some like gold filigree and stuff, but he's, he, you can play with this guy. We, we also have a, uh, one of the, this guy, one of the Brabrarian, the Brabrarian, which, um, yeah, these are just all with like speed paints. Okay, how we go, how we going here? <laughs> We've got, Primer in there. 
great. Oh. And then I can just get a little bit of black in there so we can mix it up. I think there's still a little bit of residual blue in here. Uh, that grey's a little, a little dark, a little darker at the moment. I'm kind of hoping something a little lighter. I'm gonna put some of this white back in. But yeah, it's been super, super fun painting some of the Hero Quest minis. Um, like I thought I was doing a marvelous job, and then I went to my mate's place, and he showed me his box of complete painted, entire Hero Quest box, beautifully painted too. Uh, and it was just, <laughs> I was like, oh man. I'm super jealous. Every, every, and he had like the expansions and everything. It's like, oh, I want, I want this. Can you get? <laughs> it was very nice to see it all painted. So I definitely have to continue with it. Uh, you can see even on top of the uh, of the shelf what we got up here. So we got a few more ready to go. So we got the elf and the wizard. I really want to paint. And we got the gargoyle as well. He's he's painted. Uh, and an orc. Uh, and the kids have been helping painting it too, which has been fun. Uh, some, 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 some of the ones the kids have done are better than others. Uh, there, there is like one of these dark wizard characters that my kid did a really good job on. Just need more. I need more. I went too dark with that ink. I'm gonna have way too much of this stuff. Oh, no, no, not Age of Sigma, but, um, yeah, that's like, you know, Age of Sigma sounds great. I've got some, uh, Sylvaneth I want to paint up. Painted plays better. I like that. It's kind of like, uh, how red cars faster, right? This is, this is getting insane. I might have to empty out some of this. It's getting a bit thick now. Ugh. I was hoping it wasn't gonna get too thick. I might have to just add some water here. That color's better though. Look, it's still a bit thick for the airbrush. Yeah, no, that's good. All right, I'm gonna try try this. Let's try this on for size. There we go. Make a little bit of a mess here. Lovely. Alright, don't need any more of that. Alright, so we've got some grey. I'm gonna just start dusting a little bit. I'm gonna be a little bit lighter with this grey, I reckon. It's just a little, little test spray, I reckon. Yeah, that's alright. That's good. Coming out, <laughs> that's good. Uh, let's see. See how that worked. So I want to turn it into snow. Right here. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think if I keep going 
light like that. It's not too bad. Like I'll do some like edge highlights and stuff. But that's good. Yeah, I'm just focusing around those stony areas. Kind of make, just kind of like dusting, I guess. Yeah, it looks like I don't have to go too heavy on it though. Which is good. That's true. Can I always add a wash thanks to the tip tan? I, I think that's a good idea. going for subtle here. I don't need to go a lot of gray, I think. Let's see how they look in next to each other. No, that's good. I think that's a good, like, undercoat of this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell with this camera. I'd love to drop the exposure on it a bit so you can have a better idea. But it's not behaving tonight. Do we want to have a little update on the uh, on the waterfall happening back here? Hmm. Still dripping. Yeah. It must be like a gutter or something. I think there's a gutter on the other side. It must be overflowing. We'll keep it going though. I'm just gonna hide down here <laughs> a little bit. I forgot my, my sign was off. There we go. Yeah, it's better. We've got more ruins to dust. Dusty ruins. I, I, I look at these ruins and I start to think, I wish I'd had these for um, Shrine of Savras or something like that. That that what that is for the Aspire Peak adventure, or is that? Noticing another drip happening in my in my in my dungeon. Oh. Is that up there? You can see it. Okay, I'm getting I'm drowning in here. <laughs> drowning here, guys. Hopefully, that's not going to get anything electronic back there. Oh man. It's too much rain. Uh, Bar Troll says, uh, found a quick, quickly improve the paint job on houses. I dry, take dry pastels, crumble it in the fine dust in the corners. Ah, so a little, little dusty stuff. Brown, purple, any other color. Ah, I do have some, some pigment powders here from Vallejo. I haven't tried them a lot, but I definitely, I definitely know. One thing, one thing I would, uh, I would, I would love to know, right? You use the pigment powders, right? How do you, how do you fix them on, right? Do you just dust it on, call it a day, or do you put like a, do you use just like a varnish, and then that, that does it, all right? Because I found like if I use a spray varnish or something on it, 
it just completely kills the effect. That's actually rad. Man, I'm gonna have to take some pictures of these. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should be. Because then you can see pictures of all this stuff. With like lights and fog and stuff. We started the live stream with, with fog. So we, we always gotta have fog going. But yeah, if you like seeing this kind of stuff, Stuff I'm working on. I'll, I'll, I'll usually post a lot of the stuff I'm even from like live streams. So, yeah, Instagram's a good uh, second for me on where you can find some e extra content. The, the real crux of it, though, is the Discord and stuff. Some fantastic folk in there. It's been a, it's been a buzz lately. We've got some new new blood in there. We've been killing it. They've been having some like fantastic setups. It's really inspiring to see. I feel bad sometimes because I'm asleep uh, sometimes when all these conversations start happening. But everyone's like super encouraging and it's, yeah, it's a great place to be. I really, really enjoy having the Discord. See. There we go. Oh, these are looking these are looking really good. I think it's also with like these 3D models when they have this nice detail to it. You don't have to do a big amount of paint job to them to get them looking good. Yeah, no, I'm really liking how these look. Uh, I use Vallejo matte varnish on it to strengthen. Ugh. It's like, a, is that like a spray varnish or is that like a paint on varnish? Uh, I saw a Ninja on video where he says to leave the pigment dry. He says he's never had any issues of it spreading anymore. Interesting. I think naturally my instinct is like, I finished this, I want to varnish it. But that's interesting, you just, just leave it. Maybe I'll try that with these. The airbrush is behaving nicely tonight, <laughs> which is good. It's not clogging, which is great. I'm really liking how these are looking, these ruins. All right, I'm curious how it's gonna go on these like cobblestone, like flat pieces. This one's kind of flat. mix with the pro acryl and just like acrylic inks really good 
I know uh, I've just been using like the white Pro Acryl primer and it's been like it's got a nice finish to it and it sticks really nicely. I didn't, I've tried using the Vallejo airbrush primer, didn't love it. It wasn't coming through nicely, it wasn't, it wasn't sticking nicely, it just had a, like a real weird finish to it. I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of people use like the Vallejo airbrush primer, but for some reason, it just wasn't working for me. Out of gray. I feel, like I'm, I feel like it's struggling to come through. Maybe it is. But just when I said it was, it was behaving. No, there's plenty, plenty in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, keeps it looking dusting, not turning. Paint if you wet it to a paint if you wet it. However, I wouldn't use it on terrain. It's just using it for miniature bases. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know. But it sounded great on, um, on that house. Oh, sad. Don't do that. variation on these. I'm painting over here now. Is it good? I don't know, I was struggling to get the, the light I was gonna be just getting blinded on the other side. This is looking alright. All these tiles, tiles. Probably got a little light on that one. Too many left, I've got five, five tiles left. How are we doing for time? Usually I like to get a good chunk done before midnight. That's good, yeah. I think I went a bit too heavy on the other one. Oh, it's only a subtle effect, so don't have to do it too much. So, I could use more. Yes. No, no like, is, is, is it coming out here? Yeah, there we go. All right, we've got the whole site, whole table here. Let's see, this is a, how big is this? This is eight, they're eight inches each. So, and I have 12 tiles. To make a four. Oh, smash. <laughs> the wolf there. Boo. Yeah, I don't 
have to do a lot on there, I don't think. Because I think, they would be, especially with these flat ones, I think they're going to have less rubble on them. All right, that's looking all right. I'll have to show you guys a little bit more what they look like from over here. But we, yeah, we've almost got a whole, whole ruins here going. That's a decent, decent chunk of work. I only have two left. We'll get there. See that rain is still coming down that Atmoseeker logo. I'm just hoping it can hold it together before it clogs. <laughs> We're, we're almost there. We almost got this. And then, I don't know, I was thinking of throwing like a green in here a little bit. Or do I purposely want to keep it a bit neutral in case we want to do it for like a frosty kind of like icy ruins or change it to like hellscape ruins, forest ruins. Maybe that's... That's where the, these guys come in. That kind of video. Showing how you can modify neutral, neutral type uh, terrain with a bunch of lighting and scatter techniques. I think we've got it. I think we've got everything. Everything's had a pass of the brown. Uh, you need to cover the whole lab in a tarp. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely for this uh, this rain that's settling in. Makes me a bit nervous because I've got a whole bunch of electronic stuff back there. I think I think we should be okay because it doesn't. Yeah, I don't know. I need it. I need. I need it to not flood over there as well. Uh, yeah, to be. <laughs> To be continued, if Seb drowns, drowns in here. Whoa. All right. We got these tiles with this pass. I think, I think I'm going to be done with the airbrush. Let's see if, if I can get a little bit of normal brush. Overkill Joe, good to have you here. Just join the stream. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, we're just painting up these ruin tiles. I like to get on top of the stuff I print, so because uh, I, I am very guilty of printing a lot of terrain and that type of thing, to only have it sit as a pile of grey for weeks and weeks. So it's nice to finally see this stuff get to get some get some paint going, which is really good. Uh, Boris has a tip about uh, varnish because I'm afraid of dry pastel coming in contact with water I use of, and when using a fog machine. That is an excellent point. I do use a lot of fog and stuff, so yeah, probably still will have to varnish it. I have seen, so, I, I've seen something where a guy was using like a, a like a, a dropper kind of thing, and with some kind of like alcohol. He was activating it, and that held it in place. I'm just going to clean this guy out a bit. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's a nice day when it's easy to clean. Uh, <laughs> do you want to say, next stream can be uh, washed. It's just going to be me in a boat. 
this point, it's coming down pretty hard. I should have cleaned the gutters. I will hear about it from the wife tomorrow, I reckon. Where is that? Yeah, there we go. Just gotta clean this guy out. Trying to be a good boy. Have my cleaned airbrush. At least cleaned enough. There's a little clog. Alright, that's good enough. Uh, Alright, so I wanted to hit the edges of these. So I think I'm just gonna get like a normal palette. How are we doing for time? We've got, we got 15 minutes. We can try a little bit of an edge, edge highlight on these boys. What are we gonna use? We're gonna use a like flat brush, round brush. I don't know. What have I got? Probably a flat brush. We've got a whole bunch of brushes here. This, ooh, this guy looks good. Let me try that. We've got a palette this guy. Probably gonna move this camera now because we're less doing the, doing the airbrushing. <laughs> I want to have this guy on a rail normally, but at the moment we're going manual on this stuff. Yeah. Nice. All right. Yeah. Next time, next time, Seb's gonna be in a boat, apparently. I'm just gonna grab. Should I do? I'm not sure if I should do tan or or gray. I do not know. I'm gonna go with light gray. I figure I can always tint it with a wash or something. Oh, like acrylic here. See how she handles. Yeah, I'm just trying to hit those those edges, right? I don't want to dry brush the whole thing because that's gonna make those like make those layer lines pop. So I'm just going for those edges. Yeah, that works. Yeah, it looks nice. I like that. All right, there's a lot of nice detail in here, so. Gonna try and be gentle with it, I guess. Not too much. Just a little bit. how these are turning out. Oh, that's gonna be a little harder. I'm gonna need a smaller brush for those other ruined areas. Just have the uh, drip, 
on the drip cam at the moment. Well, at least it's nice and simple that I can remember, even if I don't finish this all up tonight. At least I can have one. That looks pretty decent. So it was just, it was just the grey. Grey for those edges. Yeah, that's right. Overkill Joe, they are FDM printed. So that's why I'm just hitting the edges here. Just because I don't want to expose too many of the layer lines. Oh, the red light is making me think you are dry brushing red. I could change that light, but, um, just, you know, I'm in the danger zone here. I don't know, I could be quite subtle with this, but I'm trying, I'm trying to take, try, take a bit of care with these. I want them to look nice. Good, just kind of going in through the uh, arch there. Mmm, yeah, this is obviously going to take a little bit more finagling, but I'm liking how that's turning out. Let's, you know what, we're probably going to wrap up in a sec, but let's do a last little layout, maybe even just using the stage top uh, here, because I would love to see how it all looks. Get rid of all these, all these flat ones. Uh, the layer line, <laughs> the layer lines are signs of an ancient magic that destroyed this place before the ruins. I like it. It's a nice little twist on there. All right, so I'm just using the. These are actually quite good. I'm using the um, uh, the light rails on it. I was like, oh, this is actually cool. Like, just like little. If you could like, you could pre-make little slices of the encounter 
and just kind of pop them together. It's actually quite, quite classy how it all fits on here. Yeah, and I reckon I'm gonna need like a cracked version or maybe a version with like a hole in it or something that I can pull some of this in there. But yeah, that's a nice like modular board, which is pretty cool. Let me get, uh, let's get this guy down in there. Yeah. All right, let's get a little bit of fog going. Turn this off. off. Oh yeah, that's getting super nice and dramatic there. Maybe let's get it there. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. So let's get let's get like one one little light in there. Get one of these little little pin spot guys. <laughs> Looks like a cup holder for 24 people. Actually, some of the inserts for this. Um, the stage top system are like cup holders and stuff, which are pretty cool. Okay, let's look at this little guy. And there we go. Yeah, sweet. That looks rad. Hmm. Yeah, awesome. Well, this is still a little work in progress, but uh, thanks to everyone who has uh, joined me for the stream tonight. Be cool to have these finally done. Keep an eye out on the Instagram if you want to see how these guys uh, turn together. Um, also, uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope that Seb doesn't get too flooded down here in the um, Australian garage dungeon because uh, it's, uh, it's raining cats and dogs out there. Um, but yeah, thanks to everyone who has tuned in the stream uh, and also we've got some, some videos on the way and everything. A huge thank you to all my uh, supporters on Patreon. You guys are amazing with a special shout out to Anthony Von Olen, Blake Darley, Chris, Charisma on Command, Chris, Chris Andrews, Constructed Chaos, Darkfire Designs, Dr. Justin L. Hamrick, John A. Johnson, Mini Wargaming, Nathan Mack and Michael Dykes. Thanks so much, guys, and uh, this will be, uh, we'll, we'll, you will hear me from me on the community tab if, uh, if things get too flooded in here, but hopefully not. Until next time, I'll catch you later. See you guys.